That's a question that sparked a four-year legal battle. Should transport companies force parents with buggies to make way for wheelchair users? Well, most firms prefer to ask non-disabled travellers to move rather than make them. But Supreme Court judges will today decide if that policy goes far enough. Our legal affairs correspondent Clive Coleman has been looking at this case. Good afternoon. This is a story about a man getting on a bus Thank you. that's turned into a four-year legal battle. In 2012, Doug Pawley tried to board one from Weatherby to Leeds, but a woman with a child's buggy was in the wheelchair space and refused the driver's request to move. Doug couldn't travel. I appreciate it's difficult with kids and luggage and everything else to fold a pushchair or to move it. But ultimately, unless she did that, you know, she's effectively stopping me from being able to use that bus. Doug Pawley sued the bus company First Group and won a ruling that its policy of requesting but not requiring able-bodied people to move from the disabled space was unlawful discrimination. It's an issue everyone has a view on. I'm able to fold my buggy and I can lift my son up and um, there's always someone to help and if you can't walk and you need a wheelchair then you obviously need that space more than I do. I mean I can understand it because it's quite a stress travelling on buses with children and obviously you've already gained your space, you're already sat there, where can you put the push chair? I wouldn't do that but I can see why people would. First group appealed to the Court of Appeal. It found that although wheelchair users have priority to occupy the wheelchair space, there's no legal requirement for drivers to move other passengers from it. And now this battle between the wheelchair and the buggy has arrived here at the highest court in the land, where seven justices will decide whether bus companies need simply ask mums and others to move from the disabled space or make them move. But First Group stands by its policy. It is very rare for a passenger to refuse to move. Um, our drivers will, will ask a passenger in the strongest, politest way they can to move, and we train them to do so. When somebody does refuse to move, it is extraordinarily unfortunate. But we do believe that the approach that we take is the most feasible. For Doug Pawley, though, this case is about more than simply missing the bus. It's about the reasonable adjustments that organisations have to make so that disabled people can have access to the things other people in society take for granted. Thank you. A win for him could have big implications for bus and train companies across the country. Clive Coleman, BBC News.